I am raw. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming. What is it that you would have me speak to you about? Um, all right. Um, the closest, so I, I read the books, the, uh, uh, the Law of One, uh, channeled by um, Carla Ruckert uh, in the 70s and 80s. And, um, and we spoke to Khufu, so I think it was very logical to speak to you now, especially because the personality of sun becomes uh, more, uh, surfaces more in our thought process. So I wondered uh, if we could meet with you and find out what, uh, more details about you. What motivated me? Well, that is too. I did not hear that. Um, I just said that it would be nice to find more detail about you and uh, what motivated is also of interest. First of all, I did not let many come before me. Uh huh. I was a private entity. Uh huh. And I ruled in a way that made me seem godlike. And mm -hmm. many have, of course, thought that I was a god. Mm hmm. But of course, God cannot be on earth, mm -hmm. not in its full regale. But what caused me to rule the way I did, I do not know, except for I felt this great strength of the universe and I had the technology to do so. Uh huh. So I, I wonder, go ahead. You wonder? I wonder uh, what species were, were you? That is a good question. I was a hybrid species, some, a person from a hybrid species uh -huh. here that was part Arcturian, part Syrian. I'm not even sure all the parts, but it was a very <laughs> advanced civilization. Uh, were you Blue Abian? No. I see. Were you col col uh, collaborating and working together with Blue Abians? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So we know about you from Egyptian history. Uh, it, was it the only place where you worked or were you everywhere? I was working other places in the galaxy and universe. The Earth was only one of the places that I came to do my work. Uh -huh. I had many other places that I had to be. Uh huh. So, what was your approach? My approach mm -hmm. was that I was in charge. It is true that I was the ruler of my world. And I became ruler of many others. This one included at that time. And so in order to be the ruler of a world, you have to be there at some point to mm -hmm. oversee what your peoples are doing, to oversee all the positive and negative activities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Being in charge of several worlds at once is not an easy task, but I surrounded myself with some very powerful people as well. How did you look? Yes, no one knows what I looked like, do they? <laughs> right. The eye of Ra is a human eye, according to what I see. But I did not look human. Uh huh. I had a, I did have a blue tint to my skin. Uh huh. And I looked a little reptilian at, at places. Uh huh. My head was a sort of a snake like, almost Naga looking. Mm -hmm. But it is because of the, the hybridization. Mm -hmm. 
In some places, the hybridization looked more snake-like. In other places, it looked more reptilian. And even other places, it looked more humanoid. But you must understand there are many hybrids in the universe. All right. Uh, what was your association with the sun star, soul star? It was one place that we got a lot of energy. We learned how to bring, uh, take direct energy from the sun and use it in very powerful ways. And that is why I was called the sun god, is because ah. the sun, I could walk out into the sun and direct and they could see that I was collecting the energy from it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I got it. So what periods were you covering in Egyptian history? Were you there most of the time? I was off and on there for about 200 years. Oh, I see. Maybe was there... 200 and about 226 earth years. Was there a replacement for you or was it everything? So, Well, after that period, after the 226 years, I had other people govern that area. Right. Uh, in uh, Assyria, um, Basically, in Babylonia, there was a, a statue which looked like uh, what you described. Was it you? Perhaps. I do not know that they had made statues of me. Uh, but did you rule there as well? I ruled many places, yes. And I was in many parts of your world, yes. What other parts? I was in Samaria, India. Peru, Argentina, Central America, Native America, England or the United Kingdom, China, Australia. I've been to them all. How about Russia? Of course. And France? Of course. Oh, gosh. I see. It was necessary for me to look at the different parts of the kingdom for, with different social graces. Uh, what's your connection to, to uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ? Uh, he also is connected to Sun, and he, your legend is his legend in a way. He is a creator being also and came to the world for a different purpose. He did not come to rule, but to bring spiritual uplifting to the people. So there's the only connection? No, there are many connections with Jesus throughout the universe, but he is a spiritual leader and not one known to be a political leader. So he right. comes for spiritual reasons and is noted to have changed many different worlds. So you don't have the same soul or do you belong to the same soul branch? We may be related in some ways by creator being status, but that is all. I see. I see. Now, uh, how different is your personality with, uh, from the personality of the sun star? would be very different. You are not related, right? We are not related. His personality is I, I would not know how to tell you exactly, but he is he does have many different personalities in many ways. He changes a lot. Right. He has different aspects to him just like god might because he's more energy than he is corporeal so um what was your dimensionality in which dimension did you exist 
I was from a high fifth dimension reality. Uh huh. <clears throat> yes. So you didn't come down to the physical on Earth. Well, I had been I had been actually in the seventh dimensional originally. Uh huh. Uh huh. As a creator being, you start in the seventh dimension. Mm -hmm. But then they put me in a fifth dimensional world to help them out. And then that is from there, that is where I came to Earth. So what functions as a ruler did you uh, perform? I made sure that the people were being treated fairly. I made sure that the technology and all the things that were being maintained on this planet were taken care of properly. I made sure that the governments knew who I was and could work on their own, but if they needed me, they could call me. Uh -huh. I had very many name I had many names on your world. Oh, what other names? I do not know all the names that the people called me, except for a couple. A couple will I, suffice. What? A couple will suffice for now. I was called Krishna. Uh-huh. I was called Buddha. Uh-huh. I was called other things. My, but I moved about. These were, I would come in and walk into these personalities so that they would uh, find me enlightened. So you want, uh, and uh, so Buddha wasn't your incarnation. You were just joining him for I a short while. Him. No, we were part of each other because I walked into his being oh you did yes i could do that with many different beings i was just discussing that yesterday with my um friend uh that um, there were mountains that uh, krishna built just for his uh parents so they didn't have to travel to himalayas i wonder yeah. if it was your your action I helped him with that, but it was his action on his own as well. Wow. Because it looks like it was a real physical event. He just did it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, were you able to communicate with the sun uh, star? I did and do. So how is, uh, what is happening now with the sun? It is going through another great change. It is in a period of somewhat rest. And when that happens, the earth suffers. Ah. You uh. may think that you are going through global warming when you may be actually preparing for an ice age. I do not right. know for sure. Right. So, um, there is a question which, you know, many of us are asking is, um, are we affecting the state of the sun? You cannot affect the state of the sun except by prayer and energy work, but the sun can affect you. Because, um, I don't know, is it too presumptuous to think that we are, the humanity matters and the state of humanity reflects on the sun? The state of humanity does matter and does reflect on the sun in some ways. But the sun goes through its phases, no matter what it, the earth people are doing, no matter what the Venusians are doing, mm -hmm. no matter what the Martians are doing, or those out on the rings of Saturn or Jupiter. All right. Uh, so, so the Earth will 
yes, the people of the earth are important, and God put you in this place for a particular reason. And the sun is affected by your presence in some way, but only because God says so. Right. So, uh, although there are other races in solar system, uh, what is the impact of our race on the sun, you know, percent-wise? I, I, because the consciousness is, uh, I guess, how much of consciousness is with us is how much of consciousness is with others. You mean your, you believe you are sending out your consciousness to affect the sun? Um, I believe that... Uh, what happens on Earth is interesting, so much of the attention of the universe is there, here. This and, is true. Uh, and that yeah. might reflect on the sun more than what happens on other planets. Yes, but the sun has a job to do, and he cannot shirk his responsibilities because of what the humans are doing. Right. So he has a job to do and will do it no matter what. His attentions might be drawn to you, but they will not be... He will not act differently because of these things. He must do what he is told to do and what he is instinctively meant to do. Right. Now, um, especially David Wilcock and some other people say that ascension is a process which starts with the sun uh, transformation. So the sun will transform and the dimensionality of the humanity will transform as a result. That is one want? kind of ascension. There are many kinds of ascension if you want to speak of how ascension works. All right. Ascension is truly the actions of moving toward God in, in as many ways as possible. So the act of ascension for humans is to evolve into greater beings to be closer to God-like. In the low one, you dictated uh, in the 70s, there was an idea of harvest. And uh, you said that the harvest is uh, basically the ascension where we move to another dimension. And at that time, the predictions were that very, a very small percentage of humanity will actually move. Uh, okay. is it, uh, is it, has it changed in, in any way? A very small percentage of humanity is ready to move at this time. The age of ascension is just beginning. Right. The ascension will take a while. And by the end of that time, not everyone on earth will still be ready. But the, the ascension will happen when, it is, when enough people are ready for it to become um, an event. Right. So what will happen with those who are not ready? They will stay behind and they will become a different race of people. Ah. And is there any more particulars on that? So what will they do? This is unknown. Mm -hmm. We know that they will be separated if indeed they do not rise. So, um, is ascension happening during lifetime, or is it just reincarnation and in, in a higher level dimensionality? Do you have to is die here to ascend? Do you have to die here to ascend? No. Are you sure? You may ascend without dying. There are some that have proved this in the past. Some Tibetan monks translate through to the next uh, dimension without dying. And there are those that are trying to do that at this time as well. But it is not an easy thing to do. And it takes a great deal of time and concentration. Right. So maybe it's just easier to die here and be born on the new earth? Yes, it would be easier to do it that way, yes. So maybe that's how things will happen? It is, by my understanding, the way it should happen. Oh. But we will see. I see. 
Now, Mm -hmm. some believe that a wave of energy will come and translate many into the next dimension. This this wave that is coming is a, a wave that will change people, but it will not help It will not translate them into Terra Ha or the next dimension, but it will bring them to a greater understanding of spirituality so that they may grow faster. I see. So there will be some uh, uplifting even on this planet. There will be, yes. Some waves have already come through, but there are still more yet to come. All right. Yeah, when I feel a higher dimensional energy, sometimes it's uh, just uh, uncomfortable. Sometimes it's just painful. So some people get... Because you are not ready for it yet. Right. Or we're not expecting it at that moment. Or at the moment that it came, you were in a negative frame of mind or a difficult situation. And so it did not affect you the same as it would had you been in a positive frame of mind. Right. Yeah, I feel more numb, like I'm losing the connection to what I know and I don't get the perception of of the higher level. So I I feel like more disconnection than connection. I understand. I, 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 I analyze and I can see that something positive is happening, but, but what is happening, I don't know because I don't feel it much. At least my old mind, old mind doesn't feel it. And the new mind is not connected well enough to understand. You will feel the things you need to feel. And that is all I can say. God has a plan for everyone individually. Really? How does it? um... And as a a whole. But your part of the plan is like being a fitting into the puzzle. If your part is not done, then someone else will have to rise to fit into that puzzle piece. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that is an interesting concept. Uh, It's not as uh, well developed in our understanding, so it would be nice to understand it better. So when you say God has a plan for everyone, do you mean it literally? Yes. How does it, what's the mechanism for that? The mechanism is that you are aware of God in a certain way. This is by, it is by uh, his doing that you understand him in the way that you will work toward him. Many people do not have an understanding of God and will work to do what they do in his plan that may try to or seem to be uh, anti-ascension, but still work into an ascension plan. So um, I assume that the God is, as you mentioned it, uh, it's it's more like a a field and a consciousness which is outside of our time. He is outside of our energy. He is pure energy of many, many different kinds. There are different right. kinds of energies, and he is all of them. Right. So he's, he has some, some sort of plan, but I didn't realize the plan is actually detailed for every person. In so, some way, yes. So um, You play your part. So how does its plan look like for every person uh is there like uh what's the mechanism of keeping it or creating it you are born with it right so is it the co-creation of god and the soul something like that yes so the you can deny it you can go against it Mm -hmm. you can be uh separated from it if you wish you have free will But Uh as you uh move forward, your free will changes with your decisions. You Uh understand uh that. And God knows basically who you are and how you're going to act. So is it negotiable? It is. So suppose the plan for a person was to uh, become a mother and then she is a mother and she says how about I become a grandmother and uh, 
Uh, after that, I would possibly become a, a leader of sorts. Uh, it is it negotiable? The, these things are negotiable to a certain point. Uh -huh. At some point, God has the final say. But you, you make decisions to move toward the things that you want. If someone on your planet wants to become a mother, they may do so by their actions. Right. And, and if they are physical, physically able, they may also become a grandmother because their children have children. But they cannot dictate everything about other people's lives because uh -huh. they are not only in charge of their own. Uh, so, when I say negotiable, who would be in uh, charge to make these decisions? So, the person who finished their assignment and made a nice uh, job of becoming a mother, and then she asks God, how about I become uh, a grandmother and a leader of the tribe? And that is not in the uh, plans yet, in the drama uh, out outlines. Well, he must take the actions to bring that about. If she prays to God for these things, then he can give her the strength to, and the abilities to do these things. But it will be her actions, not God's, that will, will show what she will become. Right. So, I mean, there is so much information. There is like billions of people praying to God and uh, be, uh, innumerable number of other entities who are praying to God. How that amount of information is processed? Is there like one consciousness that does it all? There is a consciousness that is God, and he has many facets to him. Oh. When, there, when you think of energy, do you think of only one thing? Or do you think of many different kinds of things that are run on energy? He puts himself in many places to be many kinds of energy to many kinds of people. And therefore, he is in many things to be an energy to many that they may not even be aware of. Right. Now, uh, there is that idea which I picked up on a Russian um, metaphysical seminar saying that a mother side, a feminine side of God is um, supportive and a masculine side of God is creative. Is there any truth to that? In some ways, there is truth to that, but the feminine side of God can also be creative, and the masculine side of God can also be supportive. But if you're talking main roles, it may be more that way than the other. Uh huh. So, and the, and that the masculine side is uh, symbolized by a flame, a fire. Is it right? God is symbolized by a fire, both masculine and feminine sides. Oh, gosh. So difficult to, to delineate that. It's so, so, it's not, it's hard to describe it in simple terms. Yes, it is. God is not a simple term to be described. Right. It is time uh, for me to go. Uh, all right. Um, nice to talk to you and... Um, let me see the timing. Oh, it's time for you to go. How about you spend one minute giving us some blessing, guidance, uh, prayer, whatever you fancy. One moment, please. Kikwa, Okuria, Nanunyabo, Watu Wak, Kakash, Shanjiga Wati, Tia Ah, Mok Wat, Nipiatia O Wu, Portija. Much love. Much love, thank you.
Hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Oh. Was, a, was a nice session. Okay, good.